Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green with something that I found interesting. The State Minister of Defense of Japan, Mr. Nakayama, says that the United States should beware of a Pearl Harbor style surprise attack. Look at this. Russia and China are coordinating military exercises to threaten not only Taiwan, but also Hawaii according to a senior Japanese defense official who warned the United States to beware of a Pearl Harbor style surprise attack. And he says this as a quote, we have to show the deterrence towards China and not just China, but also the Russians, because as I told you that they are doing their exercises together. Yasuhide Nakayama told the Hudson Institute this week, so should we take notice of this or ignore it? Well, just keep in mind what the Bible says about this time period. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7. The Lord says this, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. The Lord Jesus Christ said that. So we're going to hear such things and they may develop into wars, but don't be troubled for all these things must come to pass. The end is coming, but not yet. Know this in verse eight, all these things are the beginning of sorrows and we know that this precedes the tribulation because we see the middle point marker the abomination of desolation further down in verse 15 when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whosoever readeth let him understand as we are currently in the transition into the tribulation. Down in verse 21, we see this, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. The Lord tells us far in advance. See, verse 25, behold, I have told you before. And just for clarity, the Lord wants us to know when to be expecting these things. So he includes a parable. Remember, this passage of scripture is well over 2000 years old. So we want to be sure when we should expect these things. What we are witnessing is the transition into the tribulation. Those in Christ will not see the tribulation, yet we will see the transition into it. So the parable of the fig tree explains. Verse 32, now learn a parable of the fig tree. That's why we need to learn this. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. We are living in that generation, the fig tree generation. So we're going to see some more stuff as we go along. And one could say that we've always had wars and rumors of wars, nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We've always had famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Mm -hmm. This is all true. Yet these things are warnings that, watch this, coincide with the fig tree generation. This is how we know it is near. When Israel returned back to the land in 1948 is the starting marker. So what's the point here? No matter what develops, God is in control. Behold, he has told us beforehand. So don't be afraid. Part of knowing this beforehand is so we won't 
be afraid. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The other part of knowing in advance points us to Jesus Christ. John 20 and 31, But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So yes, the time of perishing is coming upon the earth, but the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we see this in 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we know that whosoever believes in him, Jesus Christ, should not perish, but have everlasting life. We see this in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. All right, I'm going to leave it here for now. Be encouraged in the Lord. Trust his word. Till we meet again. Love y'all. Shalom.